Okay, so uh, our in class this evening is going to be mostly working on our hips and our lower back. Um, so it should be nice, comfy poses, and there's quite a lot of one side and then the other. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, you're going to want to have a nice squishy cushion and also uh, we'll need a strap towards the end of our class. So, or a belt or a scarf or whatever you've got to hand. Uh, so, I'll just wait for everybody to settle down. Just come to a nice comfy seated position on the mat. And we're going to start with our breathing exercises today. And we're going to do our alternate nostril breathing. Breathing, Nadi Shaharana again. So, just Get nice and comfy, ground yourself down and gently blink the eyes closed. Just maybe take a few shoulder rolls and some nice deep inhalations and exhalations just to centre yourself here. And check in with your natural breathing. So just notice how you're breathing right now. Now take the uh, index finger and middle finger of right hand and gently place the fingertips of those two fingers in the middle of your eyes, just above the eyebrows. So it's what we call the third eye. Then you're going to take ring finger and little finger and gently close the left nostril of it. So you're just breathing in and out of your right nostril. Now inhale through your right nostril. Close it with your thumb. Open the left nostril and exhale. Inhale through the left. Close that nostril with your ring finger and little finger. And exhale through the right. In through the right. Close. Out through the left. In through the left. Close and out through the right. In through the right. Allowing the breath to lengthen. Out through the left. In through the left. Close. Out through the right. Keep going in your own time for a few more rounds of breath. Allow the breath to slow and lengthen. Balancing the yin and yang, the left and right in your body. Just a couple more rounds here. If you want to finish, 
and exhaling through your right nostril. And when you've done so, just place both hands on the knees on the thighs. Beautiful. So blink the eyes open. I'm going to take a few just gentle warm up moves here before we get into these deep yin poses. So inhale and reach right arm up to the sky. Place the left hand on the mat down by the side of the body. And exhale, fold over to the left. Excuse the alarm on my watch. Inhale back to centre. Exhale, release right arm. Inhale, left arm up. Exhale, folding over to the right. Just waking up the sides of the body. Inhale, back to centre. Exhale, release. Take soles of the feet out on the mat in front of you. Knees are tracking in lines with the hips. We're just going to windscreen wiper our knees from left to right. You can roll a little bit from one sit bone to the other. Just feel those joints waking up. Then come to stillness. And you can just straighten up the legs a little. You don't need great really extended legs here, but we're just going to point and flex the toes just to warm our feet up, because our feet can get a little bit kind of compressed during the in when we're sitting on them for a long time. So it's like a ballerina practicing good toes, naughty toes. And then our final warm up before we get into these hips, just lie down on the mat, feet um, flat on the floor to begin with, just allow the spine to settle down into the mat. And then bring your knees in towards your chest. Place your hands on your knees and start to circle the knees in and out. So they're making opposite circles. So you bring the knees together and then you push them apart. Like you're drawing circles with your knees. You can keep the toes touching and that might give you more stability in those hips so you can take them out a little wider. And whichever direction you've been going in, change it. So if your right knee was making a clockwise circle, now it's making an anti-clockwise circle. and come to stillness. So our first yin posture tonight is going to be child's pose. So you can come back up to sitting and then take yourself onto your hands and knees. Big toes are going to touch. Knees are going to come out as wide as the mat. If you want to, you can use a pillow to support the head or the uh, belly. Or if you prefer, you can sit on that pillow by placing it on your heels. Walk the hands away from the body. Allow the head to come down to the mat. Hands are just soft. You don't need to put any effort into those fingers. Just lengthening out that spine. We're going to stay here for a few minutes. Feel that deep stretch in the 
hip joints. You might also feel this in the shoulders. For some of us it's going to be our first yoga posture of the day. So just go with care. As we hang out in this pose a little longer, you might feel that lower spine remains coming. As we create space in the body. and soft. I'm just letting gravity do its work here. Come out of this pose and straight into the next one. So just gently walk your hands towards your body. Push your body into an upright position. You can lose your props for the time being. We're going to come into frog pose. So we're going to start by being in kind of a hands and knees position, but our knees are going to stay as wide as, if not wider than the mat. Our toes are going to maybe point inwards, backs, uh, tops of the feet are resting on the mat. From here, we're going to walk our hands out and possibly take our elbows down to the mat. So I'm going to just show you, I hope you don't think I'm deliberately showing my bum here. But so you can see the position of the knees and the toes. So the knees are out quite wide. Toes are kind of pointing in or pointing at least in line with, if not narrower than the knees. And this is frog pose. So this is great if you're practicing your side splits or if you're just working on mobility in the hips. Maybe you can go a little deeper and walk the hands a little further. Chest comes a bit closer to the mat. But just keep in mind that 55 to 60%. And work what feels right in your body. We're going to hold here.
So we're doing a little hip opening today. Hips are said to be where we hold a lot of emotion in the body. So we all know that when we get stressed, our shoulders get tense. But sometimes if we're carrying a heavy burden of emotion, we start working into our hips. They can kind of unlock things or help us discover things. And this is a safe space for you to do that. You might be feeling this in the lower back. Just play around. If you haven't got any pinching or pins and needles sensations, if you have, you just want to push your body up quite a little, draw those knees in a little, ease off. Work on your therapeutic edge. Boom to come out safely from this posture. And as we did before, we're going to push ourselves back up using the strength in our arms and our hands. Walk those hands towards your body as you do so. You might be able to just gently step those knees back in line. And just sit back on your feet. Everybody looks like they're okay. So we'll move on to our next posture which is butterfly pose. So this is the pose where we sit on our bums with our soles of our feet touching. Our two edges of the feet are on the floor. Options with your props today is that we're going to fold forward. So you might want something to rest your body, cover your head up. If you've got a block that you're working with, you can use that too. And you've just got to have a play around to see whether you want the elbows inside or outside of the legs. Just keep in mind where you want to start these uh, long poses from. And allowing ourselves to round the back here. Shoulder blades just gently drape apart. If your head comes easily towards your feet, you just want to support your head because it's just a few centimetres away. You can always make fists with the hands and stack them on the feet.
is a really nice counter pose to that frog pose we just did. Folding forward rather than arching back. Just checking on the breathing. Make sure it's still nice and slow and steady. And every exhale, just sink a little deeper into that forward fold. Fill this in. Backs of hamstrings and glutes. If you gently come back up, so we're not quite position. I'm curling that spine. Take the hands and use them just to help the knees back together. We're going to come into our next pose. So come back to that tabletop position. With knees under hips and hands directly under shoulders. We're going to come into Pigeon pose. So we're going to take right knee and put it right behind right hand. And then right foot, you can either just hang up, hang out in the centre here, or maybe it will just wiggle over towards the outer edge of the mat. But we're not in a great hurry to make this horizontal line you sometimes hear about in pigeon pose from knee to ankle. That's not the objective here. So once you've got your knee and your foot in position, we can grab hold of your prop. And you might want to, this week, just try out what it feels like to put that prop underneath the thigh of your right leg, your bent leg, your front leg. Just sit down on it. And what that's going to do is it's going to keep your hips nice and level. So just to show you straight on. Oh, me here. And we're going to take the prop and just sit down on it like that. Other leg comes straight out behind, top of the foot flat on the mat. And make sure those hips are nice and straight today. And it's up to you, Yogi's choice today, where you want to work. Now you might want to work in this upright position, really sinking the groin down into that uh, prop, into the mat. Or if you like the uh, lengthening of the spine, you can walk the hands away. Take a deeper stretch. Everyone be mindful of that hip on that prop and just ground it back down.
so some people find these pigeon postures really comfy and soothing. Some people find them really challenging. Wherever you are at on the scale, just breathe. Notice what's happening in your body. Accept the posture. Just work at your capacity. Check back in with the hip of that bent leg, rolling off of the floor. Do you need to ease the trunk of your body back and up a couple of centimetres just to get stability and equalness in these hips? Again, we're going to push ourselves back up with care, gently. You might need to just hang or toe your back leg in a little bit to give yourself a little bit of space. Move that prop to the other side. Take those uh, knees back in line with hips into this neutral tabletop position. Just give your hips a little wag from side to side, just wag that tail. Just notice the difference from one side to the other and then we're going to repeat that on the other side. So this time you're going to bring the left knee right behind left wrist. You're going to take left foot into the centre or maybe out to the outside edge of the mat. Don't worry about that straight line today. Just get that foot where it feels right for your knee. Take that prop. Slide it under the thigh of your front leg and then just walk the knee and the foot of the back leg so it extends out behind, top of the foot comes to the mat. Take a moment here to settle that hip down into that prop. And if you want to, you can just work in a slightly more upright position. You might feel it more on the outer edge of your hip, on the thigh, or you can move the hands away from your body, folding forward, working deep into that hip socket. Surrender to those feelings. Feelings of frustration or distraction. You can let them go. Just breathe.
came back in with that hip again. The hip of your front leg, your bent leg. Is it rolling out? Are you collapsing forward? Just take those little adjustments. Gonna release from this pose. So as before, walk your hands back so that you're in that upright position. Heel toe, extended leg back in. And for this time, take yourself into a seated position on the mat. So the next pose that we're going to do is half saddle pose. We've got a few different options here. And you're probably going to want to start in kind of this half lunge position. So you're going to take right foot forward and you're going to put left knee on the mat. And I suggest that we all take our cushions and place them directly under our bum. See how everybody's looking. Yeah, lovely, lovely. So, what we're going to do is we're going to sit on the cushion so that our bum is coming close to our left foot. So, it's going to be a deep quad stretch and a hip flexor stretch. If this is already feeling tight, you might want more cushions under here. If this feels okay, you can extend right leg. And so your left foot should be fairly close to your left bum cheek. From here, we can take our hands down from the sides of the body and start to walk them back. Maybe elbows come down to the mat. If you've got really flexy, stretchy legs, you might think this is really comfy and you can just come all the way back to lying down. Some people even rest their hands over the top of their head on the mat above their head. Keep in mind we're hanging out here for a little while so just see how that thigh and that hip flexor feels. This is half saddle pose. Now, if our foot is feeling a bit funny, we can play around with the foot. And that might mean just taking it out further away from the side of the body. You've just got to adjust it for you. This is a fantastic stretch for anyone that's doing loads of exercise. So running, cycling, strength training, even if you're walking up lots of flights of stairs or going for big massive walks every day to get your daily exercise. Our quads are a muscle that we use daily. We can really take a lot of time to lengthen them out.
to stay with this. Check in with those muscles. Check in with that foot. If you're stretching deeply in this pose, you might feel it in the lower back. Hopefully your prop, your big cushion, is supporting you. It sits underneath the bar in the back. Just a few more moments here. Place the hands down by the sides of the body on the mat. Pull the elbows, forearms, really far back. You're going to have to engage your core a little bit. And gently come up. You can take sole of the extended foot on the ground if it gives you a little bit of space. And roll out onto the, onto the uh, other hip. And just lift that foot back out. Is everybody all okay? I think they are. So we're going to take the other side. So we're just going to repeat the process. So this time we're going to take what foot was it? We're going to take the other foot forward. So left foot forward this time. Right knee resting on the mat. Place that comfy cushion or pillow directly below your groin and start to sit back on it. Maybe this feels okay as you bring right foot close to right bum cheek, top of the foot resting on the mat. If this feels all right, then you can extend that left leg. And if that feels okay, then you can start to walk the body back. Lean the body back, lengthen out that quad. Just start where it feels right, knowing that we're going to be holding this pose. You need to release the pressure, you can still take a little bend in that extended knee, extended leg, place the of your foot on the floor. It's normal to have one side that's a little easier or trickier than another. through now so you can just check in and see whether that muscle is starting to lengthen out because we've been holding it for some time. Use your breath to explore. So on every exhale you just want to soften and relax. If you have come all the way to the mat, your shoulders should be relaxing into the ground. 
just want to be kind of arching my lower back and straining. I just want to be softening. And this is half saddle pose. If this is something that you're enjoying, or want to deepen it further, full saddle pose is both knees in the stem position. And maybe we'll tackle that another day. For now, we have a few more moments here. If you've got arms overhead, you can bring them back down by the sides of the body. You'll have to push elbows into the mat and use core to come up a little way. Get the hands onto the mat. Push yourself all the way up. And you just that up. You can get rid of your prop now. And in its place, we need our belts, scarves, straps. And we're going to come into half happy baby pose. So everybody lie back down on the mat with soles of the feet flat on the floor, knees are bent. We're going to take our strap, lift our right foot off the ground and place the strap around the foot. You kind of want it in just above the centre of the foot, so it's pulling on the ball of the big toe and the outer edge of the foot. So you've got right leg in the air, you're going to bend it, see if you can stack the foot above the knee. It doesn't matter if it does it completely, just as long as the intention's there. Keep that strap in the same hand, so the right hand. Tuck the chin under. If this feels okay and you want to go a bit deeper, you can extend that left leg onto the mat. Just see where you're at. And we're going to hold here. The intention is that that knee is drawing down towards the armpit. So it's going to widen and come out to the side. The foot should always be tracking in line with the knee. You can let the elbow that's holding onto the strap rest on the ground. So you can move the hand down the strap, you can slacken the strap up a little bit so that the arm's supported. Steady breathing. Relinquishing any effort, but maintaining our intention and our focus.
the uh, chin tucked under. Keep the shoulders relaxing down. Feel this deep stretching in the groin, the inner thigh. Very gently, you can release the strap now. Just take that foot down to the mat. You can actually just hug it into the body for a second, just into the center, interlace fingers side to side. You can just have a little walk. And then place that foot back down on the mat. We're going to do the other side, so we should be on the left leg this time. So you can keep the uh, right foot flat on the mat to begin with. Strap's going to go around left foot. You can hold the strap in the left hand. You're gonna bend the knee, take it out to the side, let the foot float up into the air so the heel of the foot is in line with the knee. Make sure that that left hand is nice and relaxed, elbow is in contact with the mat so that you're supported. And just intention here is to draw that knee down towards the armpit. If this feels like you can take the intensity slightly higher, you can extend that right leg out onto the mat. Yin is working far beyond the superficial muscles that we stretch in our three to five breath holds. We're in these three to five minute holds, working deep into the muscle tissues, the ligaments, the fascia. Until it gets too much in these poses, just ease off. Maintain the intention, but reduce the intensity. into the last few moments of this posture now. Just allow your exhales to stay long and steady.
can slowly let that strap go, let that foot come onto the mat. Don't just drop it onto the mat, just don't you care. And like we did before, hug that knee into the body, into those fingers over the shin. Just give it a little rock from side to side. Just allowing it to settle back. And you can roll over onto your right hand side. Push yourself back up into a seated position. We're going to take our last yin posture. So you take uh, sitting bones in connection with the mat. You grab a hole in your comfy pillow. We're going to take a uh, dragonfly, which is wide legged forward fold in traditional yoga. So take your feet out wide and allow your legs to extend. Now you don't need to be perfectly straight. There's going to be some space between your knee joints and the mat because of your calf muscles. So just allow that to be natural extended leg position. You don't need to flex your feet either in the end, you can just let them soften. And in terms of props, we're going to be folding forward. So it could be that you just need something to put your elbows on and place your hands in your hand, in face in your hands. If you bend really deeply, maybe you're going to rest your belly on it. You want something to put your head on. If you want to, you can take hands to the ankles or the shins. We can reach out in front. Yogi's choice. Just be supported. Open your yin practice tonight with some nice calming forward fold. We're still working deep into those hip joints. Just notice what your quad muscles are doing now. Are they flexing and squeezing the muscles, squeezing the bone? And if they are, just ease off for a little bit and allow them to relax.
going to feel the lower back lengthening and expands. Just enjoy this posture now. This is a nice big stretch. Very gently, as we have done before, push yourself back up and walk your hands back towards the body. And because we've done the loads of hips, we're going to take a couple of really nice restorative postures before we get into a short meditation and then savasana. So the first thing we're going to do is lie back down on our backs. And we're going to just hug the knees in towards the belly. It gives ourselves a really nice hug. We can roll from side to side. We're not going to hold this for as long as we have held our human poses. We are just going to hold it for a little while. So don't squeeze those shins too tightly. You can just be in a nice relaxed hug. Just feel the sacrum. So it's a very, very lower back, just above the bum. Just feel it in contact with the mat. You might take little kind of rolling movements, drawing little circles in your knees again, maybe. Maybe rocking from side to side gently. Maybe falling back a little. No big crazy movements, just gentle massage. Now release the hands down to the side. You can cactus the hands, take them out at shoulder height. And then we're going to let those knees just roll over to the right. And just let the feet come to wherever they come. So the bend of the knees might relax, legs might kind of flop out quite far. Just let those legs come and rest on the floor. And you can turn your head to look to the left. Just for a little twist. These are completely restorative postures, so you don't need to feel like any kind of effort or sensation. They're just here to do you good. Take your chin back to a neutral position to begin with. Come back to centre, just place feet on the mat. Nothing too radical rolling around here, just nice and steady. And then let those knees come to the other side. If you've not got much space, you might need to shuffle in a little bit. Just let those knees come to the left hand side. Turn your head to the right. Arms can stay where they were.
from here, you can bring those knees back into centre. We're going to do our meditation from a lying down position, so if you're warm enough, you can just take the feet out to the edges of the mat, hands down by the sides of the body, back to the hands touching the mat. Or if you need to grab a cushion or a blanket or something for a really nice restful close to our practice today, then by all means. We'll just let you all get comfy. It's like a sleepover watching everybody put their blankets and their socks on. It's so cute. So settling back down. Coming back to stillness. Reconnecting with that breath. We're going to do a simple and quite well known meditation for peace. So forgive me if you've heard it before, but its simplicity makes it very popular and also very effective. Before we start, just scan the body now that you're lying down. And just notice any changes both in your physical and emotional state. Notice if anything's come up for you. If there's any discoveries that have been made today within you. And then just reconnect with the breathing. And on every exhale, just accept those observations and let them gently fade. Instead, Listen to the sound of my voice. So we're going to be repeating a mantra, well, an affirmation. We'll be change, changing the focus each time. So to begin with, the affirmation is, may I be happy, may I be well, may I be safe, May I be peaceful and at ease. So I'm going to repeat this a few more times for you and then allow you to repeat it either silently or whispering to yourself. May I be happy. May I be well. May I be safe. May I be peaceful and at ease. One more final time from me. May I be happy. May I be well. May I be safe. May I be peaceful and at ease. Now as best you can, repeat this affirmation to yourself a few more times. Take some more steady rounds of breath as you absorb the intention of this affirmation. I'm going to repeat the affirmation 
This time you're going to picture a loved one and send them these good vibes. And this time the affirmation is, may you be happy, may you be well, may you be safe, may you be peaceful and at ease. Once again, may you be happy, may you be well, may you be safe, may you be peaceful and at ease. Repeat this either silently or whispering a few more times. Continue to breathe steadily as you send these good vibrations to that loved one. Now picture somebody that you have a challenging relationship with. Somebody that is not always easy or smooth to get along with. Going to direct the same intentions of kindness and love to them. May you be happy, may you be well, may you be safe, may you be peaceful and at ease. Continue to repeat this affirmation silently in your mind or whispering. Feel these emotions of kindness and love, this positive energy for the final time. We're going to use this affirmation. We're going to send these intentions out into the wider world. So that we can feel a connection with all living things. So for the final time, the affirmation is, may you be happy, may you be well, may you be safe, may you be peaceful and at ease. Once again, may you be happy. May you be well, may you be safe, may you be peaceful and at ease. Repeat this affirmation a few more times to yourself. Continuing to breathe steadily. Allow the words of the mantra to drift away. But feel the rhythm it has left behind in your mind. Sense the quality of space and time it has created. 
rest here with this space of time for a little longer. Gently now, bring awareness back into your body. Wiggle fingers and toes. Make your teeth move your lips. Keep the eyes closed. If you want to, you can take a big full body stretch through the feet, arms reaching overhead. When you're ready, roll over onto your right hand side. Very slowly move from this recovery position into a sitting position when you're ready. The hands to heart centre, loop the eyes open, namaste everybody. Thank you so much for practising with me. If you enjoyed the class don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, all the good stuff. For more exclusive yoga content check out my Patreon and the other links in the description box below and take extra good care of yourself. Namaste yogi people.